What up, what up, YouTube Alex? Coming back at you with another custom StarCraft 2 cast spawning on the top right hand side of the map. It's our purple Zide player, Karor, going up against his opponent, spawning on the bottom left hand side of the map. It's our blue Zide player, Stas. And this should be an interesting game. We do not see a mirror matchup between the Zide race too often. Now, if these races look familiar to you, but something looks a little bit different, fear not, you are not in the Twilight Zone. We are casting a custom Zion races game. It adds three new playable races to the StarCraft universe. It's a super sick mod, and if you want to see more of it, I cast it all the time. So, please consider subscribing if you wish to do so. Now, back to the show. It looks like Stassen going for some mineral harassment right here. We'll see if Karor decides to do anything about this. Karor sending over a scout of his own. We'll likely see what Stassen is up to. And Stassen doing something I want to say a little bit sus. And Stassen also <laughs> getting pushed away from that mineral line. Great control by Stassen, though. Great map vision or map awareness, I should say. Now we have what is going to be a scavenger nest coming down for, for Karor as well. This is the hatchery equivalent for for the Zayat. So he's throwing down a relatively early expansion. He already has his Zayat den down on the map, which is one of the production buildings for the Zayat. But taking a look at what Karor, or sorry, what Stassen is up to. Stassen has two Zyadens. He has a third feeding pool on the way. The feeding pool is the supply depot equivalent for the Zyad, and he does not have an expansion. What is this scavenger doing? This scavenger, though, positioning itself to possibly throw down an expansion, but it's going to be it's going to be quite a bit later than Karor's expansion. And what do we have here? We have the Roamers. The Roamer is a really cool unit. It's great for scouting. It has this scour ability where it shoots this green little ball of map vision that explodes into a timed area of map vision. It is actually super sick. And we have a lot of the Roamers. What do we have on the production tab for? for uh Karor. and that's that's the scour ability that i was talking about so as you can see we have a full circle of map vision for stassen but but Karor is able to see that runs away his scavengers and actually has what are two scorpolisks and a roamer the scorpolisk is a really cool unit it's melee only but when it does damage i believe it reduces the movement speed of whatever it hit by about 40 percent and these roamers man they are they are confident they're like oh we can probably we can probably kite these scorpolisks to death but karor he's not playing that game he's like stay away from my base and on the mini map as well we see stassen going for the expansion as well in his natural base location so what i thought was originally some sort of one base all in may be turning into a two base all in or stassen is deciding that maybe maybe he should go for the late game we'll see about that though taking a look at the worker count 28 workers for stassen to 25 for karor so behind all that stassen's still ahead in the worker count that actually surprises me just a little bit and here we go we have two we have three zydens actually and what is this we also have what is a castnalisk den so that is tech for the zyad so even though it's also a den this does not produce units this provides you tech Four units the mutagen chamber is going to be like your evolution chamber for the zyad as well and what do we have here a feeding pool now the feeding pool is really cool too if you're not familiar with my channel uh i did i have described this in previous casts but the feeding pool heals up to three workers not three workers i mean potentially workers it heals up to three units for the zyad so it's supply and it's also support is what i would describe the feeding pool as here we go. This is a big attack. And I love this back and forth with the uh, with the scour ability. That's giving map vision to both players. They're getting a good position, a good read on the opposing army. And see, man, like, the Zayad is, from what I know at least, one of the least popular races of the three. You have the Zayad, the Genetron, and the Chiron. And the Zayad are going to have a big overhaul in their graphics. They're going to look like plants eventually. Right now, they look like Zerg. Eventually, they will look like plants. So, I'm really curious to see what the overhaul will look like. And not only that, but I hope it gives the Zayad some much-needed love. Because, man, they're personally one of my favorites of the three races. I mean, they're all great. I think Chiron's my 
my favorite, but that's also because I'm a Protoss player. So yeah, I know. I know. I'm a dirty, dirty Protoss player, and I do not feel bad about that, even though I know I should. And here we go. We have a lot more. <laughs> we have a lot more roamers. I love how Stassen's going for the mono roamer play. What else does he have on the field? He has uh, what I believe is going to be a Castnalisk finishing up as well. The Castnalisk, as I recall, is an anti-armor unit. I haven't played the Z uh, the custom Zion races mod in a while. I haven't done a cast of it in a while as well. I did post one relatively recently, but I haven't actually played StarCraft for about a month. IRL was just IRLing, man. It was not a good time, but we are back. We are back casting StarCraft 2, and we have some back and forth right here. These Scorpolisks, unfortunately, melee only. They don't really know what to be doing. And these, these Roamers doing a ton of work on the Purple Zion army. The army supply is still relatively even, though. Karor is doing a great job at keeping up the macro behind. Being, <laughs> being totally harassed by Stassen. Both players... Actually, no, sorry. Now Karor is on two bases. Stassen actually on three bases. So what turned into what I thought was going to be some sort of all any play is now turning into a macro play for our Blue Zion player. Both players are doing a great job, though. They are so evenly matched, man. It's actually insane. Worker supply 50 to 37. So Stassen is in the lead where workers are concerned. Army supply 46 to 32, also in favor of Stassen. So what Karor needs to do right now is either do some economic damage to his opponent to catch up, or he has to he has to think about expanding. And just as I said it, he does. So one thing you have to do in StarCraft, which is kind of hard to do when you're in the moment because you don't really know if you're ahead. At this point, Stassen should probably know he's ahead based on what he's seen on Karor's side of the map, is you have to find a way to either put yourself ahead if you're behind or if you're already ahead you want to keep that you want to keep that advantage because if you let the other players sit they're they're able to catch up and you might throw away a free game so just something to consider where starcraft 2 is concerned and Karor losing some more army units. At this point, we're at 55 army supply to 26. So virtually a double army supply lead for Stassen. But some of that army is back home. Where are they? I think they're just chilling right here. So we only have about half of the firepower on the purple side of the map for the blue player. What is this? An Asin Nest. I think that was produced by the Castnalisk. We'll see if that does some damage. But Karor actually coming out ahead in that engagement at the same time though we're going to have a big big reinforcement of blue zion units and karor may be overextending himself right here forced on the retreat taking a look at the workers killed at the units killed excuse me 41 units killed to 27 taking a look at the resources lost 2900 to 4600 in favor of our blue of our blue zion player i almost called him a zerg player <laughs> But man, this game has been non-stop for like nine minutes already. It feels like I've been casting for three minutes. This game has been going by so quick. But we have what is going to be a potential surround on the purple Zion army. But these Spartan roamers able to survive somehow, man. And now we're looking at 36 army supply to 20. Based on what we were seeing, it's still in favor of Stassen, sure. But based on what we were seeing in the earlier game, I feel like that was a big, big misplay for Stassen in the sense that he lost a lot more of his units than Karor did. But Stassen is still very much in this game, man. I mean, he's on four bases to three. Worker supply 72 to 53, also in favor of Stassen. So Stassen is still very much in this game. He's still very, very much scary. And I think I would probably GG out of this if I were playing against Stassen because uh, I think I would just be too scared. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. And here we go. We have the scour ability for the roamers. Stassen able to see that so he knows at the very least there's roamers somewhere on his side of the map or at least they were but they're running back home we have this acid nest which is just chilling still not <laughs> still not detonated so that's providing some map vision for Stassen as well knows that that base is not taken these little landmines man I've never actually played against the acid nest and we have the spitter as well. The spitter is a really cool unit. It shoots this ball of acid that does AoE damage. 
really cool and let's just have a moment to appreciate the custom zion races mod because if you told me this was some sort of starcraft 2 dlc if i had no idea that modding was a thing for StarCraft 2, I would absolutely believe you. And here we go. We have the Farian as well. The Farian doubles as a dropship and detection for the Zayad. I wonder, I wonder where this Farian is going. I believe it's Roamers that it's holding. So we still have just three bases for Karor. And, and Stassen is expanding like a madman. And now army supply is a 30 army supply lead for our blue Zaya player. It's 90. Well, okay. Now it's a 40 army supply lead. 101 to 60. Taking a look at the worker supply. 86 to 62. Also in favor of Stassen. And that's no, that's no surprise, man. I mean, he almost has half of the map <laughs> in his possession already, man. That's actually insane. And we're only at 12 minutes into the game. 11 minutes into the game. We do see the cancel right here for Karor. Great, great time. Timing for Karor on the cancel for that. Uh, I almost called it a hatchery. It's not a hatchery. It's a scavenger nest. <laughs> and we have what is going to be. What is this? A drop? A drop of roamers into the main base. This is bold. And at the same time, we have another engagement kind of at the attempted expansion for Karor as well. We have the evacuation of workers. So both players have very, very good map awareness. They have good gaming awareness right here. And Stassen not losing a single roamer in all of that chaos. Taking a look at the workers killed. Only 11 workers killed this game, and they're all killed by our Blue Zaya player. And this army is looking terrifying, man. This army is looking so scary. We have the eroders. Oh, sorry. I, I, I called these castnalisks earlier. They're not castnalisks. They, they are eroders. Excuse me. We also have the reviler, which I believe... I actually don't remember. I'm, I'm getting confused with a Chiron unit that's anti-air. I don't remember what the reviler is. I think it's an anti-ground. If, if, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And we also have... Okay, there's the castnalisk. So the Castnalisk is, is this little demon-looking thing. It looks like it's from Warcraft 3. The Castnalisk is almost like a disruptor. It shoots this ball of acid that explodes. It's really, really powerful. We do not see it too often. I hope that we do get to see it. So as you can see, it has energy. It does, as far as I know, it does not have a base attack. So a lot like the disruptor, you have to you have to cast a spell for the Castnalisk to do uh, to do damage. Tripped over my words right there. And we have what is a blue, uh, sorry, a purple army as well. We have some units here protecting the main base from that Farian, but all of those, uh, all of those roamers in the Farian are still alive. And we have the Massalisk, one of my favorite units in this, uh, in this mod. It's basically like, like an Ultralisk, if an Ultralisk had range, and then it has a siege mode where it can do anti-air damage. But even though these things are scary and massive, they will not stand a chance to what is a full little army of roamers. And at the same time, we have the the scour ability popping on top of this purple army. So Stassen knows exactly what kind of army composition Karor has. He has a very similar army composition to, <laughs> to Stassen, actually. I feel like I'm watching Zerg versus Zerg now. That is so cool. We do have the Farian right here providing map vision. Not map, well, I mean map vision for sure, but also providing detection for the purple army. And Karor actually coming out ahead in this engagement. Now the army supplies even. 88 to 90 now a slight lead for Karor 90 to 78 so a great engagement for Karor and now he's going for the counter attack this is exactly what you want to do that acid nest doing some aoe damage though and Karor potentially overextending himself just a little bit we have the massalists and we have the xiathones now the xiathone is also a detection unit but it does have support abilities as well and Karor being forced on the retreat at the same time this Farian trying to do some damage with those roamers but it looks like the roamers do go down taking a look at the workers killed 20 workers killed to zero in favor of our blue Zayad player what an epic game ladies and gentlemen this is actually insane the last game I cast with Karor and Stassen was equally as epic man these guys 
never failed to put on a show. This is such a sick match. I mean, it's been nonstop. And we have, what is this? We have the Scorpolisk. I'm trying to select him. Getting hit by that Acid Nest, but trying to do some damage. We do have that Bile Pit, which is static defense for the Zayad. Will take out that, uh, that Scorpolisk at the very least, though. It gave Kuror some map vision, and he knows there's a base here that he might be able to, <laughs> to harass just a little bit. And this is exactly what I wanted uh, to see from Kuror, is doing some sort of harassment to the economy of of the blue zion player i mean he only killed one worker which is unfortunate for him but we may see a lot of workers go down and stassen being an absolute beast expanding dangerously close to the enemy okay and this is the Masilisk siege ability that I was talking about. Apparently, it also does anti-ground, but I do not see the Masilisk often enough <laughs> to have remembered that. And this is a really scary army. We have the Eroders, which are, like I said, I think an anti-armor unit for for the Zayad. I've, I've seen them compared to Immortals for the Protoss. And we also have these, uh, <laughs> these Masilisks. In their siege mode, I don't actually know what this ability is, actually. Oh, wait, no, I think that ability is from the, uh, from the Xyathodes. But, man, this looks like it's possibly going in Kuror's favor. I mean, these Eroders are super, super tanky. But we have the Spitters as well going to be doing some AoE damage on this blue army. But I think, I think our blue Zyad player is going, going to come out ahead. This is a really, really hard fight to... To decide on but i'm i'm thinking i'm thinking this must be in favor of of stas and i don't know why he's not coming in with his eroders to save his uh to save his masilisks where is his where is his where is his screen where is he paying attention and here we go we have the eroders coming in the spitter doing so much damage. It has three kills. That eroder went down. I did not see how many kills it got. We have the Scorpolisks trying to run away. I don't know where they're going. Oh, we have actually so many units right here. But these are the Zyadlings. These are basically Zergling equivalents for the Zyad. So, potentially won't be able to do too much damage to the eroders. But we'll see about that. They may be able to out DPS them. And we have the spitter right here behind the mineral line at the, I want to say, fifth or sixth base location for our purple Zayat player. How many workers went down? 26 workers killed by blue and only three by purple. Oh, this poor Masilisk. I was going to say it didn't stand a chance, but it kind of almost stood a chance. So, not too crazy. And we have what is going to be a big engagement with these little Zyadlings doing some damage. Oh, getting these scavengers way out of position right here. These eroders going down almost instantly. It looks like the scavenger nest will for sure go down. These Zyadlings doing a ton of work. Taking a look at the workers killed now. 34 workers killed to still three. So Stassen in the lead where workers killed is concerned. Taking a look at the resources lost, 20,000 to 24,000. So uh, still a slight deficit for Karor, but at this point in the game, it's really not too crazy. Taking a look at the worker supply, 103 workers to 81. So both players are pretty healthy where economy is concerned, but there is a lead for Stassen. And army supply is literally identical, or it was. It was 80 to 80, now it's 80 to 90. So in favor of Karor at this point by almost 20 army supply. And what do we have here? We have two variants coming in. So what is this? I, I don't even know what base to count this as let's just say like maybe the fifth base sixth base i haven't paid attention to where he was expanding at what time taking a look at the workers kill 13 workers killed now so that was a really really good hit for karor and also coming into i want to say what is that like eighth or ninth base i mean stassen has been expanding so crazy now 16 workers killed by karor so karor is picking up some workers he's catching up his side of the map is relatively safe. These bile pits doing some damage, but but the Farians able to survive. Now the game is kind of quieting down. I mean, we're going into a crazy, a crazy macro game. These armies are just so epic, man. That is absolute insanity. 
We have what is the purple army chasing away the blue army from Karor's base, the purple Zion base. Taking a look at the army supply, 76 to 88. But we just had a big boost of army supply for stats, and so it was 76 a second ago. Now it's 98. So we have an army somewhere here. I mean, they do operate a lot like the Zerg. So they have Larva, and they have three production structures. They have the Zyden, I believe it's the Avianist, and I can't remember the third one. Uh, but if I see it, I'll point it out. And each one has its own kind of Larva. And we have one base going down for Stas, and Karor is out for Zyden Blood. And we have what is also going to be... <laughs> Another base in jeopardy from two Massalists and an engagement in the middle of the map. This Massalist trying to chase down this almost dead one, but it's surviving. And we also have the Kraken, which is basically the capital ship, the capital flyer for the Zion. I don't know if I would consider it a ship because it's biological, but it looks a lot like the Leviathan for the Zerg. I think it's the same unit model. And... These Massalisks doing a ton of work, and the Farians here supporting them, likely to pick them up in case of anything, but one goes down. These Massalisks doing so much damage, though. 31 workers now killed to 50, so... Karor is catching up, able to protect one of his bases simultaneously. I think Stassen is distracted, so this base might actually go down, and at the same time... Stassen's base on the far right-hand side of the map, also in serious danger. Are we seeing a base race right now? Is that what's happening? Stassen is consolidating his army in the middle of the map. He's not even trying to protect... <laughs> He's not even trying to protect his expansions. He's like, you know what? We're coming in for the victory. Taking a look at the worker supply. It's now in favor of Kawar. 78 workers to 57. The, worker, the workers killed is almost identical. So, even though Kawar was not killing workers in the early game, he has finally caught up. And now we're seeing what I think is a base race. Ladies and gentlemen... But at the same time, it looks like Karor thinking, hey, look, I did enough damage. Time to go home and protect my army. And honestly, based on what we're seeing on the minimap, I agree with this. Stassen has way more units. Uh, not way more units, sorry. Way more expansions than Karor. So Karor has to play this safe. He's killed a lot of the opposing economy. Now he has to go and rebuild his own able to chase away this blue army from the majority of his base and leaving what is just a few units back home this is actually a great play by Karor, doing economic damage and simultaneously able to protect what is left of his base but we have this kraken right here with nine kills oh it is so strong but the revilers able to take that out so i guess the reviler is an anti-air unit Looks like uh, both players paused the game, but because we are watching a replay, that was instantaneous for us. And the base on the bottom side of the map does go down to this little purple army. And the blue base, too close to the home of the purple Zion, looks like it will also go down the army supply. Taking a look at the army supply, 124 to 76 though. So, Stassen does have a bigger army somewhere on the map. Ready. Hopefully ready to engage this purple army because Karora is a force to be reckoned with right now. The Xythone's flying around, probably going home to consolidate themselves with the rest of the army. So we're seeing what is a, an air-heavy, an air-heavy Zayad army. This is not something we see too often, folks. And while it's quiet, I do want to find that third that third production structure because it's actually driving me crazy. Because I did... I, I did a video on it. Okay, here's the avian nest. We have the Zyaden, and I believe it was like some... Bi no, not the biomass cavern. It was some biomass pit or something like that. Why why can't I remember what that was? I think that's where you produce the... Uh, where you produce the Massalists. But here we go. We have a big engagement in the middle of the map. But it looks like Stassen may be coming out ahead in this. And slowly, slowly, we see the purple bases fall. Taking a look at the mini-map, we have what is going to be, I think, only one, two, three bases left. And none of them are mining if this base goes down. Actually, sorry, this base is mining. But the natural base and the main base are not mining. Oh, and we have the Watcher, which is a cool little observer unit that I believe is cast by the Xyathone, if I'm not mistaken. 
Very cool. Cute little unit. It looks like uh, it looks like something from D&D. &D. Where is it? There you are. Oh, that's so cool. Anyway. <laughs> and now it is quiet once again. Let me find that. Let me find that structure. Where is it? I think it's the... It's not the castle den. Maybe it is the biomass hatchery. It's a biomass hatchery. There it is. We have the biomass cavern. And then we have the biomass hatchery. So... That's our third production structure for the Zayad. But this, this army for blue is looking a little bit scary, my guy. We have the Krakens, we have the Xyathones, and we have the Zyadling supporting this. And we have what is Revilers, and we have Menlings as well, which will heal the Zayad units, but this is just too much. Army supply is 44 to 44. These players are so evenly matched, it's actually insane. We have another watcher right here just chilling in the middle of the map, getting a good view of everything, and it's cloaked, by the way. So unless there's some detection or splash damage, it is chilling. And Karor slowly getting pushed back home. He has an expansion coming up on the left-hand side of the map previously where Stassen's base was. So he's still in this game. I mean, he has 24 workers to 41, and Stassen does have a lot more mining going on than his opponent so Karor I was going to say Karor if he's playing efficiently could win this game but deciding to throw out the GG giving the victory to Stassen what an action-packed custom Zion races game literally did not give me a chance to breathe if you enjoyed what you saw please consider shooting me a like and subscribe I would greatly appreciate it and if you want me to cast any of your own games I will leave my email and discord in the description below and I'll see you guys on the next one.